Hello students, welcome to Baiju's classes. Last year, Moody's gave an upgrading to Indian economy from BAA 3 to BAA 2. This was a very good news for the Indian economy which was reeling from various issues. But having said so, Moody's also flagged one of the very important issues and said that government of India should start taking care of this particular issue. And the issue that Moody referred to was current account deficit, CAD. Now in the last one year, we have seen that Indian current account deficit or the current account deficit for India has kept on climbing up, which was somewhere in the range of 0.6% of GDP in the last couple of years has started increasing and it is threatening to go beyond 2% of GDP in this year. And if the situation continues, it is expected that it may simply even cross more than 3%. Now this is one of the very biggest problems for the Indian economy, which reminds the issue that the Indian economy faced back in the year 2013, which was famously referred to as twin deficits. And the twin deficit basically refers to one current account deficit as well as fiscal deficit. Now twin deficit basically refers to current account deficit as well as fiscal deficit. Any economy that suffers from one usually suffers from the other. India suffered from both of them in the year 2013 and thanks to the policies of the government of India and more importantly thanks to international crude oil prices decline we were able to bring both of them under control. But in the recent times because of various issues majorly because of depreciating rupee value the current account deficit has increased. And it is now even threatening the fiscal deficit, which will cross over the 3.3% threshold, which has been decided by government of India in the budget for the financial year 19. So in this particular video lecture, let's have a discussion related to the rupee depreciation. The points that I'll be discussing in this particular video are one, let's start with some of the basic concepts. Let's try and understand what is depreciation, appreciation, current account deficit, trade deficit, so on and so forth. Then we'll have a look at why Indian rupee is actually depreciating in the current scenario. What are the reasons or what are the causes? Third, whenever rupee depreciates or any domestic currency depreciates, the exporters are expected to get more benefit. Why is it so? We'll understand. But more importantly, since rupee has depreciated from 69 rupees to 71 rupees in the last two weeks are Indian exporters going to benefit from this. Let's try and understand that. Then we will understand if this rupee depreciation continues or remains at the same level that is at let's say 71 rupees per every dollar. What will be the impact of this particular value on Indian economy as well as more importantly on Indian citizens. Next is India the only country which is experiencing this kind of a depreciation? Is it an outlier or is it happening in every economy? Let's try and understand that. And finally, after all of this, we will make certain conclusions or way out of this particular situation for Indian economy. So let me begin with the, the first concept that is, let's have a look at some of the basic concepts. Within this particular basic concepts, let me start with the idea of a Forex first. Forex basically stands for foreign exchange. In India, RBI has been made the repository of maintaining the forex reserves or RBI maintains the forex reserves in case of India. But more importantly, India is an open economy. Now, what do you mean by open economy? In simple terms, Indian government will allow certain transactions which will lead to inflow of dollars as well as certain transactions which will lead to outflow of dollars. Basically, various transactions which will lead to dollar inflow such as uh, tourism, such as exports, such as healthcare, such as in remittances, etc. These are some of the transactions which will lead to dollar inflow into India and some of the other transactions such as uh, Indian students going abroad for study purposes or Indian people going for abroad for tourism purposes. FDI outflow, FPI outflow or out remittances. These are some of the transactions which will lead to dollar outflow from India. But having said so, 
since there is a need of a dollar since there is a need of getting rupee exchange into dollar as well as dollar exchange into rupee you need a market to provide for this kind of a conversion this particular market is called as forex market and in this particular market the rupee value will be decided the terms that you have come across in the newspapers will be depreciation or the opposite side of it is appreciation what is the meaning of these particular terms let's try and understand this let's assume an example 1 dollar is equal to rupees 50 and 1 dollar is equal to rupees 40 let's say today the exchange rate is this one that is 1 dollar is equal to 40 rupees and tomorrow the exchange rate becomes this 1 dollar is equal to 50 what has happened to the value of rupee let's try and understand that based on that we'll understand uh, what is happening in indian currency now yesterday for every 1 dollar i was supposed to pay 40 rupees and today to purchase the same dollar i'm supposed to pay 50 rupees now if i want to put it in a simple terms 1 dollar will be nothing but 100 cents yesterday for every 1 rupee I could purchase two and a half cents. I'm just using a CSAT concept here. I'll repeat it. Yesterday, for every one rupee, I could purchase two and a half cents. But today, for the same one rupee, I'm able to purchase only two cents. So, what has happened to the purchasing power of rupee? The purchasing power has actually decreased. Whenever the purchasing power of rupee or the value of a rupee decreases in comparison to a foreign currency will simply say rupee has depreciated and since uh, it's an equation that is there is an equal to sign if one side of the currency value depreciates the other side of the currency value has to appreciate so put it in a simple term if the purchasing power of uh, your domestic currency decreases it is called as depreciation if purchasing power of your domestic currency increases, it is called as an appreciation. And it is equally true on the other side also. For example, if against a dollar, rupee depreciates, dollar will appreciate. And if against a dollar, rupee appreciates, dollar will depreciate. So in the last couple of weeks, we have been coming across this particular term, depreciation of rupee. And Indian rupee has continuously lost value. And it is not only in the last week, since the beginning of January, Indian rupee has kept on losing value. It is said that uh, since January, Indian rupee has lost uh, more than 9% of its value. In simple terms, rupee has depreciated by more than 9% between January to July. Now, because of this, understand this, India will suffer from a trade deficit as well as current account deficit. What do you mean by trade deficit and current account deficit? In the concept of a balance of payment, basically the first account will be the current account and in the current account you will see exports as well as imports on one side because we export we will earn the revenues and on the other side because we, we import we will have expenditure now trade deficit in simple terms means what is the excess value of the goods that you have imported compared to the export i'll repeat it trade deficit in simple terms means what is the excess value of your imports uh, compared to your value of exports? Let's say hypothetically, you have imported goods worth $100 into India and you have exported goods worth only $50 from India. In essence, in this situation, the trade deficit will be $50. And higher the trade deficit, higher will be the outpay of dollars or outflow of dollars. And higher the outflow of dollars, you will experience uh, a depreciation of rupee why because you need to pay in dollars you will sell rupees purchase dollars and dollars will flow out of india and because of this understand this because of this depreciation of rupee the trade deficit will also expand so basically one is trade deficit and the second one is current account deficit current account deficit is within the concept of a balance of payments the sum total on the revenue side in the current account and the sum total on the expenditure side in the current account if your expenditure under the current account is higher than the revenue side in the current account then this is called as a current account deficit and higher the current account deficit higher will be the outflow of dollars and whenever the current account deficit is very high usually this will exert a pressure on the rupee value 
and current account if it is very high usually you will see that uh, rupee will depreciate so basically these are the two terms trade deficit as well as current account deficit in case of india trade deficit has ballooned to more than 18 billion dollars and current account deficit has ballooned to more than 2% of gdp in the last couple of years itself next one is a exchange rate concept i've already discussed this let's go to the next one twin deficit twin deficit basically means uh, the fiscal deficit as well as current account deficit in case of india in the, in the year 2013 indian economy suffered from twin deficit that is uh, there was a very high current account deficit as well as there was a very high fiscal deficit and usually what happens is uh, since india is a net importer understand this since india is a net importer that is the value of imports uh, is higher than the value of exports there will be a huge dollar outflow and whenever rupee depreciates because of this the value of uh, crude oil prices will start increasing that is the import value of crude oil prices will start increasing historically india has been a major importer of a crude oil that is a, a substantial part of the domestic demand for the crude oil we have imported from the rest of the world and whenever the crude oil prices will increase in the international market this will put a lot of pressure on the forex reserves and whenever rupee depreciates despite the crude oil prices remaining same this will put a very high pressure on the forex reserves and in today's scenario what we are saying is because of various issues such as restrictions or sanctions on Iran because of various other issues the international crude oil prices have started increasing or moving upwards and accompanying this Indian rupee is also depreciating so both of this together is putting a lot of pressure on the fiscal deficit of government of India as well as current account deficit now you can understand that a current account deficit naturally will be higher but how is it connected to fiscal deficit because one the government of India will have to maintain the same market prices of a petrol and diesel and if they want to maintain the same market price of petrol and diesel the government of India will be forced to cut down on the excise duties on the petrol and diesel and whenever the import value of crude oil increases there's a lot of pressure on the government of India to reduce the, the excise duties the problem is if it allows this particular price to be reflected in the domestic prices inflation will shoot up that will be a political loss for the government hence to control the inflation rate government of India usually cuts down the excise duties and whenever it cuts down the excise duties the earnings of the government of India will get affected and whenever the earnings will get affected obviously its fiscal deficit target will also get affected that is a precise reason it is said that because of the international crude oil prices uh, increase priced uh, the government of India may not be able to achieve the fiscal deficit target for the financial year 19 the government of India has said it will achieve a target of 3.3 percent of the GDP value as a fiscal deficit target for 2019 but experts are saying uh, if the crude oil prices remain at a 70 dollar per barrel itself uh, India's fiscal deficit will be much much higher than 3.3 percent and even this will lead to a higher current account deficit of uh, around 2.5 percent of GDP so basically this is how the depreciation will affect uh, the fiscal deficit as well as current account deficit which are famously referred as twin deficits now let's have a look at uh, what is the role of RBI in the forex market whenever rupee value will continuously depreciate like this it will lead to a situation called as a currency crisis and whenever there's a currency crisis in any of the economy the central bank will try to control the slide of the domestic currency that is try to control the depreciation value of the currency in case of india rbi conducts a system called as dirty float under this concept is very simple under this whenever rupee is depreciating it simply means uh, rupee supply in the forex market is very high dollar demand in the forex market is also very high and since RBI has got the duty of maintaining the forex reserves, RBI is sitting on a huge pile of dollars. So what RBI does, RBI simply withdraws some of the dollars, sells them in the market so that the supply of dollar increases and in return purchases the rupee from the market so that the supply of rupee is restricted. In simple terms, RBI behaves exactly opposite to the behavior of the market. In the market, dollar demand is very high, rupee supply is very high. 
and RBI supplies the dollars, withdraws rupees from the market, thereby stabilizing the exchange rate of rupee. So this is how RBI maintains or helps in maintaining the exchange rate for rupee. But having said so, there is a limit on how much RBI actually controls uh, this particular situation. Why? The interference of RBI is dependent on various factors. The most important factor is uh, how much forex reserves are available with RBI. Now very recently, India achieved a huge feat that is uh, India's uh, forex reserves crossed uh, more than 400 billion dollars. That is uh, by the end of 2017, we hit of more than 400 billion dollars worth of forex reserves. And very recently, it was around 426 billion dollars. Now, because rupee has continuously depreciated in this particular half a year, RBI has been forced to intervene in the market sell of dollars. As a result of this, from a very high number of 426 billion dollars, today the forex reserves are just over 400 billion dollars. And more the depreciation of rupee, RBI will be forced to do this and lower will be the forex reserves. So there is a limit on how much RBI can control the depreciation value of rupee. So these are some of the basic concepts that you need to understand before I can explain to you why the rupee is depreciating and what is the impact of the depreciating rupee on Indian economy. Now let's have a look at the reasons or the causes for rupee depreciation. First one is international crude oil prices. The import bill for India has increased by more than 12% in the last couple of months itself. And whenever the international crude oil prices will increase as well as the rupee depreciates, the import bill will keep on increasing. Although India imports a substantial part of the crude oil requirement, it will also export uh, the POL that is petroleum, oil and lubricants. But over a period of time, the POL deficit uh, has been increasing for India. Before this, because of the decline in the international crude oil prices, the POL deficit uh, declined but because of uh, now increasing crude oil prices, the PUL deficit is increasing. As PUL deficit increases, dollar outflow will increase. This will put a pressure or influence the depreciation value of rupee. Second reason is uh, the trade deficit is very high. That is uh, for the month of July, the trade deficit has actually hit uh, more than 18 billion dollars. In the month of January, it was somewhere in the range of 15 billion dollars. And by the month of uh, July, it has hit around 18 billion dollars. So basically you can see that the dollar inflow from India has actually increased. Not only this, because of these two issues, uh, the current account deficit is also increased. That is the overall current account deficit in case of India has crossed more than 2% of GDP. And if the situation continues, uh, it will be more than 2.5% of the GDP by the year end. Third one is uh, the capital flight. The concept of a capital flight is the foreign investors beat FDI or EFPI, foreign direct investment or foreign portfolio investments. There is a net outflow of this into Indian economy. Until 2017, we have seen that FDI, there is a high positive growth rate of inflow of FDI into India. But for the first time in the year 2017, after four years, there has been a, a decline in the FDI inflow. And the FPI, foreign portfolio investment, between April to June and July, there has been a huge outflow of a foreign portfolio investment to the tune of 10 billion dollars. The reasons for this uh, are two. One, the Federal Reserve of uh, US is reversing the quantitative easing. And the second one, the trade disputes or the trade skirmishes between USA and its trade partners. Let me start with the first one. Post 2008-2009. That is, after the global financial crisis, the US Federal Reserve followed a concept of a quantitative easing. And under the concept of a quantitative easing, basically the Federal Reserve ensured that there will be a huge inflow or the huge supply of dollars into the domestic market. And this was done by repurchasing the government securities or the treasury bonds from the market. And second, declining or reducing the Federal Reserve rates. That is in simple terms, the repo rate in case of India. As a result of both these initiatives, there has been a recovery in the domestic market in US. And very recently, the US market has registered a growth rate of 4%. Now, post 2013 and 2014, the Federal Reserve has started reversing this particular quantitative easing. Thereby, they are basically increasing the interest rates of lending in US 
and second they are selling the treasury bonds and collecting the money or withdrawing the liquidity from the market both of these will basically lead to the capital flight from the domestic market to the us that is when the global financial crisis happened basically the investors from usa moved out of usa took their dollars and came into emerging market economies one such emerging market economy was india now today when the fed tapering that is reversing of quantitative easing policy is being done by fed reserve the interest rates in usa will increase as a result of this imagine this situation if there are two banks a and b and if you want to keep a fixed deposit in each of the bank and if one bank increases the interest rate obviously you will go to this particular bank to give the fixed deposit in couple of months itself the interest rate difference between usa as well as india has kept on reducing as a result of this the investors who had come to india post the global financial crisis are withdrawing their investment going back to america to invest in the bonds in america for a simple reason the interest rates are higher yield rates are higher in case of usa compared to what they were in the last one one and a half year so this has led to capital flight from india second one is the trade war or the trade battles between usa and its trade partners very recently we have seen usa having a trade war with china usa having a trade dispute with european union usa having a trade dispute with india usa having a trade dispute with mexico canada so on and so forth not only this because of various issues usa has also started a dispute with turkey which is one of the emerging market economies and has imposed a double amount of a tariff on steel and aluminum exports from turkey into usa and since uh, usa was the main market for turkey's exports of steel and aluminum turkey's economy has been hit very badly as a result of this the turkey's currency that is lira went into free fall and experienced more than 40% depreciation value in the last 6 months itself as a result of this this will usually affect the investor confidence and usually at this point of a time the investors will withdraw their currencies or withdraw their investments which they have done in different currencies and will try to convert them into safest currency and as of now the safest currency has been us dollar as well as japanese yen as a result of this we have seen that the investors from usa have withdrawn their currency that is uh, sold uh, the rupees and convert them into dollars have taken them out of india as a result of this uh, rupee has continuously depreciated in the last 6 months so these are some of the reasons uh, why rupee is depreciating in the current situation so with this depreciation of rupee will indian exporters start fetching better returns why whenever rupee depreciates uh, the value of exports uh, will increase for a simple reason i'll start getting better rupees for every dollar i sell in the forex market so in this particular situation when rupee has depreciated from 68 rupees to 71 rupees will the exporters start fetching better returns or not let's try and understand this particular situation it is said that indian exports follow the global trade more positively or there is a more correlation between the increase in the global trade with indian exports rather than indian trade or indian exports with depreciation of rupee rather it has been seen that uh, there is a no strong correlation between uh, depreciation of rupee with indian exports for example between 2012 to 2017 indian rupee has depreciated by 22% whereas uh, during the same tenure indian exports have increased uh, at a compounded annual growth rate of just 0.2% so there is a no strong correlation between uh, india's exports with rupee depreciation this happens for a simple reason there are so many other factors which will affect the exports of indian economy rather than just rupee depreciation for example the global trade what we can see in this particular representation is this indian exports have closely followed the rate of global trade or rate of growth of global trade that is especially between 2000 to 2007 it has been said that indian exports are registered more than 10% growth rate in terms of exports uh, because there was a boom in the global market and this was especially applicable when the global financial crisis hit that is uh, 
as the global trade declined, the Indian exports to global market also took a hit. And in the recent times, again, it is basically somewhat following the global trade itself. And it can be seen that because of the tariff which are being imposed by USA, tariffs, retaliatory tariffs which are being imposed by various trade partners, India being under the scanner for with, with the trade relations with USA, we can see that the trade will be disrupted all over again. And with this kind of a disruption, despite having a depreciation rupee, we can see that or we may expect that Indian exports may not increase to that particular extent. Second, earlier Indian manufacturing was not so much integrated with global manufacturing. But over a period of time, whatever we manufacture, a substantial part of this particular export has been manufactured by importing certain commodities or certain components. That is the import presence in the value of exports. You can see that in 1995, the content of imports in India's exports was only 9%. But over a period of time, it has crossed 10% by the year 2000 and by the year 2014, it is over 21%. So, when rupee depreciates, the import value will increase and as the import value increases, our exports will become costlier. And when your exports will become costlier, assuming right, there is no tariff whatsoever, assuming all of this, your exports in the international market will be very costly compared to the exports of all the other countries. So, with rupee depreciation, this will affect the value of exports. Third, as already mentioned, the currency depreciation versus export growth, India doesn't have a strong correlation. For example, you can see that in case of India, the currency depreciation between 2012 to 2017 versus the US dollar has been 21.9%. Whereas during the same tenure, the exports have increased by a compounded annual growth rate of 0.2% only. So, depreciation has not always led to a fruitful situation for exporters in case of India. So, in the present situation also, Indian exporters might get affected rather than getting the benefit from this kind of a depreciation of rupee. Now, let's try and understand what is the impact or the concerns related to this depreciation of rupee. First and foremost, the imports will become costlier. Since India is a net importer, all these imports will become costlier. As a result of this, this will also fuel domestic inflation. Already the government fears that, even RBI fears that, the increased international crude oil prices will fuel inflation in the domestic market. Added to this, further depreciation of rupee will also add to the fears of inflation in the domestic market. Already various consumer durable market participants have stated that uh, they are going to increase uh, the cost of these particular or the prices of these particular commodities in the market. And the prices of LED bulbs are going to increase, prices of fertilizer is going to increase, prices of various imported commodities will going, are going to increase in the domestic market. So basically depreciation of rupee will fuel inflation as well as make imports costlier. Second, this will further increase the trade deficit or expand the trade deficit as well as current account deficit. This will also lead to investor confidence or loss of investor confidence in the Indian market. When the inflation rate is very high, current account deficit is very high, trade deficit, fiscal deficit are beyond control, usually investors will lose the confidence in this kind of a market and they will start to withdraw their investments from the domestic market. Already as mentioned, more than $10 billion worth of investment has flown out of India from equity market as well as the debt market. And this will further fuel depreciation of rupee. Next. This may fuel or this may prompt a further rate increase or interest rate increase by RBI. Already in the last couple of months, we have seen RBI increasing the interest rate. And when rupee continuously depreciates, RBI may be prompted to increase the interest rate. If RBI increases the interest rate, this will lead to other issue that is it will suppress growth. Or this will play a limiting effect on the growth. Why? With increase in the interest rate. The lending rates in the banking sector will also increase. This will become uh, or this will make uh, capital costlier in the market, uh, which will have a limiting effect on the growth. So RBI is in a very difficult position right now. And already the markets are expecting that uh, 
in the month of October, that is a monetary policy committee review, RBI is going to increase the interest rate. That is the precise reason in the last couple of weeks, the bond yields have increased by more than 25 basis points. Next, it will have an impact on the exports. Definitely, yes. We have already discussed that. Exports may not always benefit because of the depreciation of rupee. So, it will have an impact on the exports. Worrying factor with respect to this uh, or the concern factor with respect to this kind of a trade deficit has been uh, the non-oil trade deficit. Why? Historically, in case of India, out of the total trade deficit, oil trade deficit has been higher compared to non-oil trade deficit. For example, in the beginning of this particular year itself, uh, that is January 2018, you can see that out of the total trade deficit of $15.7 billion, $7.9 billion uh, was uh, oil trade deficit and 7.8 billion dollars was non-oil trade deficit but over a period of time we can see that oil trade deficit has come down to 8.4 billion dollars and non-oil trade deficit has increased to 9.6 billion dollars it simply means apart from oil exerting pressure on the forex reserves as well as the exerting pressure on rupee value there are some other issues which are exerting the pressure as a result of this rupee is getting depreciated Apart from this, the fear of twin deficit will also be recurring. That is, uh, we can see that uh, if the oil prices will increase uh, to $90 per barrel, our fiscal deficit uh, may end up uh, being 4.63% 4 of GDP and a current account deficit may end up being 3.58% of GDP, which are much, much higher than uh, the estimated values. And this will have an impact on uh, not only the investor confidence on the domestic market, it will also affect uh, the targets which are set up by the government and which may also prompt various credit rating agencies to have a relook at the credit rating for Indian economy. More importantly, this will increase the cost of borrowing from the external market. Over a period of time, we can see that the borrowings from the external market from the Indian industries has actually increased. That is, Indian companies have tapped the foreign market by issuing various types of securities or bonds and have raised a lot of money from the external market and usually these particular borrowings are in the form of dollars except the concept of a masala bond under where the borrowing is usually done in the form of rupees but having said so majority of these borrowings are in the form of the dollars and whenever rupee will depreciate like this the cost of borrowing or the cost of capital from external market will suddenly increase this may basically have a limiting effect on what are the sources from which these particular companies can borrow within the domestic market as well as international market. Finally, will this particular rupee depreciation affect the prospects of the growth for Indian economy? Some of the experts say that the global growth has got a very strong correlation with Indian growth. That is, whenever the global growth rate has been higher, Indian economy also has achieved a higher growth rate. And whenever the global growth rate has taken a dip, Indian growth rate also has taken a dip. That is, they will use the term correlation. The correlation between Indian economic growth as well as the global economic growth rate has been around 0.42%. And in the year 1991 to 2001, it was somewhere in the range of 0.2%. That is, in simple terms, presently, if the global economy increases by 1%, Indian economy, presuming all the other factors remain constant, will also increase by 0.4%. And if global economy is hit by 1%, Indian economy will be declining by 0.4%. And since we are saying that the global trade war will affect the global trade growth, this will in turn affect the depreciation value and it will have a limiting effect on the growth prospects of Indian economy also. So is India the only country where the rupee is depreciating or there are many other countries which are experiencing the same situation? A comforting factor for Indian economy would be that all the major emerging market economies have experienced a depreciation in their domestic currency. Although a concerning factor for India would be that the rupee depreciation is on the higher side. For example, this representation shows that the domestic currency of the majority of the emerging market economies have depreciated in the last couple of months. In case of India, it is somewhere in the range of 11%. But having said so, the correlation between the current account deficit as well as uh, the depreciation in the domestic currency is a very good factor to represent uh, how India is performing. That is, majority of the economies whose depreciation has been very high are those economies where the current account deficit also has been very high. For example, 
the case of India. So before I discuss what has happened to import cover, what is import cover? Import cover in simple terms, uh, with the present forex reserves, for how many months you can continuously import the commodities into the domestic market. Higher the import cover, more the comfort for the market. So basically the import cover for the domestic market that is Indian economy back in the year 2013 was around 6 months. But today the import cover because of a huge forex reserves, the import cover will last for more than 10 months. And third, the experts say that luckily for India, the exposure that is in the form of external debt is very low compared to many of the emerging market economies. For example, you can see India's exposure here compare it with Turkey, compare it with South Africa, compare it with Brazil or even for Russia for that matter. You can see that the short term debt as well as total external debt is much much lesser. For example, the short term debt is somewhere in the range of around 3 to 4 percent and the total external debt is in the range of 20 percent compared to the total debt of uh, more than 30 percent in case of uh, Brazil, total external debt of uh, more than 33 percent in case of Russia and more than uh, 46 percent in case of Turkey. So basically India is in a much better situation compared to the emerging market economies and compared to itself uh, back in the year 2013. So finally what is the way out? How can government of India or RBI try to control or arrest the depreciation of rupee and the impact or the chaos that it will create in the domestic market. Some of the recommendations are 1. Promote inflow of FDI. The government of India has to liberalize or has to reform or introduce reforms and attract a lot of EFDI. It can be done by promoting ease of doing business, by promoting full convertibility in the capital account which is overdue for a very long period of time by introducing 100% FDI or more than 51% FDI in many more sectors so on and so forth. Ultimately the government of India has to attract a lot of FDI into the domestic market. Second, some of the imports are non-essential such as gold. India is one of the largest consumers of the gold in the international market but the problem is not all the gold can be obtained from India. Majority of the gold that is consumed in the domestic market is actually imported. And since gold is a demerit good or a non-essential good, this will have a lot of pressure on the forex reserves. In the normal times, we may allow this kind of a non-essential import. But in today's situation, where rupee is continuously sliding downwards, which will have a larger impact on the whole economy, the government of India has to ensure through some of the reforms or some of the measures that some of the non-essential imports are restricted. Third, the government of India has to implement many more policies effectively and to ensure that this will attract not only the domestic investors will also attract a lot of foreign investors such as policy of Make in India, policy of a Startup India, although which have been launched have not yielded the expected results. The government of India has to streamline the process, attract a lot of investments into the domestic market. Next, more importantly, the government of India has to start vociferous or intense trade negotiations with many trade partners and more importantly enter into negotiations. For example, right now there is a trade fight between India and USA, wherein USA has said the GSP situation for India or the GSP status is under review and whether they should give certain exemptions to Indian exports which are going to USA. The Indian government should ensure that these negotiations are done at a very faster pace and enter into trade deals so that India's exports will resume and will increase to these particular destinations. Already it has been seen that because of tariffs imposed by USA with respect to steel exports into USA, the steel exports have declined by more than 40% in the last couple of months. So basically there is a huge impact of these particular tariffs on uh, India's exports which will again impact on uh, the depreciation of rupee. So government of India should ensure a speedy negotiation or trade negotiation and much speedier trade deals with these particular member countries. Lastly. If, if the situation demands, RBI must go for a proactive step 
and increase the interest rate. Although understandably, this will have an impact on uh, the growth prospects of the economy. But more importantly, we need to remember that if RBI misses uh, the October Monetary Policy Committee review, then the only next review will be conducted in the month of December. And RBI might be much more delayed in action if they wait for December. Problem is, uh, if they wait for December, we don't know what is going to happen. And after October, let's say in the month of November, they decide to increase the interest rate. Uh, that will dent the investor confidence uh, as it is out of the turn monetary policy review. So basically, RBI could take a proactive measure, increase the interest rate in the month of October itself. Uh, so that to a certain extent, uh, this decline in the rupee is arrested. So these are some of the issues concerned to rupee depreciation and the impact of it and the measures which can be taken to control the rupee depreciation. Thank you.